Well, hello there, extra spicy fluff sausages. Lurks here, and today we're going to talk about some reasons why sometimes it kind of sucks to be a part of the furry fandom. Now, don't get me wrong here, the furry fandom is generally an awesome thing. I mean, we wouldn't all be involved in it if it wasn't something that was generally good. But there are some bad things about it. Bad things about the furry fandom? Tell us more, Lurks. And I shall. Alright, in no particular order, here are some things that make me groan and roll my eyes sometimes in my day-to-day involvements with the fandom. First of all, the interactions with normies who have a misconception about the fandom. Yeah, it's Thursday, you just got to a con, there are still normies in the hotel, and you're in your fursuit going down the elevator with some normies, and they're like, Hey, let me ask you, so that furry thing, it's, it's a sex thing, right? And I have to go into my whole canned spiel that I have about, no, it's actually an anthropomorphic art fandom, a cartoon character fandom, think of your favorite anthropomorphic cartoon character, blah blah blah, talk about the art, all the other creative stuff involved with the fandom, and then... Toward the end, I will generally admit that yes, like any other fandom, or really like any other group of people that might come together, yeah, there's a fringe of it that's not safe for work, but it's not a defining factor of the fandom. And generally, they probably walk away still thinking that it's a sex thing, because they're going to believe that radio host, or they're going to believe that episode of CSI that came out 20 years ago, or they're going to believe some social media nonsense, instead of believing somebody who's actually a part of the fandom. It definitely gets really annoying, and I wish people would educate themselves. I mean, yeah, admittedly, that fringe of our fandom is a little bit more vocal and out there in your face than it is in other fandoms, so we're partially to blame ourselves for that. And some people don't care. All right, the next thing that can kind of suck a little bit about being in the furry fandom is it can be seen as a pay-to-play fandom. Things are expensive related to furry. Fursuits are incredibly expensive. An average fursuit, full digitigrade, like this one from a fairly well-known maker, is going to run you between five and seven thousand dollars these days. Artwork can be very expensive. If you want a maestro-level artist, you're going to have to pay. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. You can find great artists who are just starting out, or maybe they're not confident enough in themselves to charge big prices yet. You can get a lot of art for inexpensive prices, or even sometimes for free. Third, going to conventions is expensive. Yeah, they're not holding these furry conventions at the Motel 6. These are being held at three and a half, four star hotels, and they're not cheap. Even at the discounted room prices that cons get, you're gonna be paying anywhere from $160 to $220 a night for a room, which means you either gotta save up some money for the con, or you gotta cram the room full of people and risk uh, getting the hotel annoyed at you when you've got too many people in there. Con registrations average $65 for the basic tier for a whole weekend. And then of course you've got the dealer's den and the artist alley. These are independent creators making stuff that's not mass produced and therefore it's often fairly expensive compared to something you would just grab on Amazon. Of course that's not a bad thing to be supporting these independent artists and creators, but you're going to have to pay for it. Now, like I said, the fandom doesn't have to be expensive. You can go to places like Fur Affinity or social media and you can enjoy tons of artwork for free. It may not be artwork of your character specifically, but there's tons of artwork that you can look at and enjoy for free if you don't necessarily have to commission pieces. You don't have to have a fursuit to enjoy the fandom. If you do want a fursuit, you can start really basic with just a head and a tail or a mini partial for a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. But again, that's not money that some people have to spend. Okay, third, we have drama. Yes, this usually manifests itself on social media, often on Twitter. This furry did this to me and they're an awful person. I present to you no proof of this or a bunch of stuff that's out of context. And the other furry comes back and says, no, you are truly the bad one. You did this to me. You are an awful person. This person stole money from me or is a bad business person because my art showed up late even though they gave me an excuse or maybe they really are and they didn't give an excuse and they stole somebody's money. It's always he said, she said, they said. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. And it can make social media platforms like Twitter a little hard to deal with sometimes. 
Now, I'm not talking about legitimate call-outs here. Yeah, there are some bad people out there who legitimately need to be called out. The community needs to be warned about them. That's not who I'm talking about here. I'm talking about more of the, the minor superficial type stuff that really doesn't need to be aired on social media and could be dealt with between the two or three people involved. Okay, next is politics. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Okay, there are 10 of you right now that are getting ready to start rage typing in the comments. Let me explain myself. I'm not talking about all politics. If you choose to mix politics and your involvement in the furry fandom, that is 100% legitimate. That's 100% valid. I have no problem with that. What I'm talking about is when it crosses the line, when it becomes toxic or hurtful or shaming toward other people. I get why people want to involve politics with the fandom. I mean, we're a very diverse community. There are state governments right now that are actively trying to hurt members of that diverse community. People are mad and they have the right to air those grievances. I personally have more characters than personas. I'm an actor playing a character when I'm in fursuit, so it doesn't really make sense for me to get all political. I choose not to mix politics and furry, but it's totally valid if you do. So here's where it crosses the line. There are three ways that can happen. The first way is people getting angry at others for not being political. This sounds pretty ridiculous, but it does happen. It's happened to me, in fact. I've had people say things like, well, you better speak up about your political beliefs or people are going to start to wonder. They're going to make assumptions about you. Are you a fascist or something because you don't talk about politics? And this leads directly into the second thing. People will make assumptions that if you aren't overtly, loudly political in your fandom involvement, that you are hiding bad or unpopular beliefs. That you're somehow a fascist because you just don't want to talk about politics. I've seen this on numerous occasions as well. It's just not appropriate and it's not accurate. The fact that I don't want to talk about politics in my fursuit or on my furry social media does not mean I'm hiding some secret fascist agenda or other unpopular set of beliefs. All right, and the third way this manifests itself, and possibly the most absurd, is when you have people who are pretty far on the extremes of the political spectrum one way or the other, who are actually shaming people on the same side as them who just aren't extreme enough. They're basically saying, well, you're not a real liberal, or you're not a real conservative, or whatever, because you won't become an extremist. It's ridiculous, and uh, yeah, you're kind of alienating your potential allies there. It seems counterproductive, but I've seen it happen. So what we're essentially talking about here is toxic politics, not just politics in general. If you want to go out there and be political, you do it. That's just fine. All right, the next one that we've all seen, and most of this stuff seems to be centered around Twitter or Musky Husky's X or whatever it's called now. All right, the next one anyway is gatekeeping. Yeah, it seems like every couple of months there's some big controversial explosion of something that's already exploded before that rears its ugly head again. It's either people over 30 shouldn't be in the fandom because you're old. Everybody over 30 needs to get out. Okay, I've addressed that one in other videos. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, people over 30 are why you have furry conventions and why you have a lot of furry YouTubers and a lot of artists and a lot of people in the fandom are over 30, more so than you might expect. And also, people over 30 typically have more disposable income to fully immerse themselves in the fandom, so it's pretty silly to tell us all to leave. And of course, there's been the same type of gatekeeping with women and with people who are not LGBT being told that they don't belong in the fandom. The fandom is for everybody. We all belong here. Also, um, yeah, what percentage of furry artists are women? I'm going to say a high percentage. So uh, say goodbye to most of your artwork if you want to get rid of women from the fandom. Now, these are usually immature, very young people who are saying this kind of stuff. Generally, they were brought into the fandom without a real understanding of what it is, and often they just view it as a vehicle for adult material and nothing else. After all, this is supposed to be an open and welcoming community, right? Okay, the last one we're going to talk about is a general lack of acceptance. You know, we talked about the misperception among some people that it's a sex thing. There's a lot of misperceptions among a lot of people out there who are not educated about what the fandom really is. 
Whether it's just people looking at you weird or muttering stuff under their breath or saying stuff right to your face even, or businesses not allowing fursuiters in, there's just a lot of misunderstanding about what we are and this perception that we're something that's so weird that normal people shouldn't be around us or that we're somehow a threat to them or a threat to their children or whatever. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that we're a majority LGBT plus community and well, there's unfortunately a lot of phobia out there still to this day. It makes it kind of uncomfortable to go fursuiting in public outside of a large furry event because you never know how you're going to be received by people. And it's unfortunate. I've had pretty good luck suiting in public, but it hasn't always been great. I've definitely got some weird looks. I've definitely got some people rapidly like crossing the street to get away from me. I don't know what's threatening about this, but apparently something is. But it can be kind of disappointing when you're out there trying to have fun and entertain people and people hate you for no reason. All right, what do you think? Are there any other reasons why sometimes it can kind of suck to be a part of the furry fandom? Let me know down in the comments. Also, as always, a super big, awesome, moist and juicy shout out to our amazing patrons. You help keep this channel going and growing, and we here at RL Furry Productions are eternally grateful. And if you might like to become a patron, there is a link in the description. All right, thank you for tuning in, and we will be back next week with more fuzztastic content. Until then, you have fun, you stay safe, and you stay fuzzy.